Okay, welcome back everybody to Wayne Manor North. I am your host, Dan, and today I'm gonna to take you through a short video about this new beast that just dropped uh, over the past week or two. It is Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo's Volume 1 Omnibus of Batman New 52. So let's roll. So this is Volume 1 Omnibus from DC of Greg Capullo and Scott Snyder's epic run on New 52 Batman. Uh, if you're not familiar with the story, we'll talk a little bit about the three arcs that are included in this beast of a book. Um, we'll talk about what issues they cover, etc. We'll give you a little bit of a look inside the book, the artwork, a little bit about the stories. This is going to be a no-spoiler review. Uh, which is something I'd love you guys to comment on. Um, when, as Chris and I, we've been talking about reviewing Omnibus and Absolutes. Uh, not sure if we should go spoiler and talk about the stories or kind of stay spoiler free. So please comment below and let us know what you think about that. Uh, but we'll take a look inside the book. But a little bit about this one. Uh, personally speaking, this is an absolute grail for me. Um, the new 52 Batman run is absolutely without question at the core of my collection. I love the statues, but I also love the books. Not a big comic book collector, but the new 52 run of Batman is, uh, in my mind, some of the best comic book storytelling and artwork ever done. Um, from my perspective, the grittier side of Batman is more compelling, right? So I'm not so much about the silliness. I'm not so much um, about kind of some of the lighthearted artwork that's done out there. It's all great and fine. It's not really my cup of tea. Uh, the grittier, from my money, the better. Um, and for me, it takes the stories and brings them closer to reality. And yeah, I know, not reality. I get it. But it takes the stories closer to reality. It's one of the reasons I love the new Joker movie. Um, I thought it was fantastic. I'm not here to talk about that today. Uh, but I thought that that movie was fantastic. And for me, it was so close to what could actually happen in real life that it just made it that much more compelling. So I love that. And that's what Snyder and Capullo did with their stories in the New 52. To me, they just threw the artwork and the storytelling, the gritty nature of it, they just took it a little bit closer to reality and I love that. So, <clears throat> um, the book is comprised of three stories. It is the, the Court of Owls, which if you're not familiar with that, kind of takes a whole new look at Gotham City and gives Batman a whole different perspective on what kind of drives the activity, and the criminal activity in the city and kind of um, throws up into question how he needs to deal with the villains or the rogues uh, in Gotham. There's also a new big baddie that's kind of part, and I won't spoil it, uh, part of that storyline, and it's fantastic. Um, you also have the death of the family, not to be confused with the death in the family, and I will apologize in, in advance if I confuse the two in this review as they're easily interchangeable, but the death of the family, it's a new Joker tale. It starts with Joker at Arkham Asylum where he meets the doll maker, and it's just a super, super compelling story, super fun. Uh, Joker takes um, things to an even more extreme level than he has in the past, so that's a super fun story. Um, and uh, there's tons of tie-ins, too, with other DC titles, so that's, that's an, an epic run. <clears throat> and the third piece is Zero Year. That one is a little bit more out there, um, takes a whole new... Um, point of view on the origins of Gotham, of the origins of the Batman mythos, and uh, is a fantastic story all into itself. Again, the artwork there is really creative. Um, some of the, one of the covers is the inspiration and basis for Prime One's um, 2020 release, statue release of the Zero Year Batman, one of which I have on PO and I can't wait for, uh, but that is uh, in this story too. Some people have referred to that as kind of walking dead Batman. I couldn't agree more. I think it's awesome, interesting, and again, it's that gritty take on the character. So uh, with that, let's take a little bit of a look at the book. So as you can see, the dust cover is pretty cool. It's this matte finish dust cover from one of the uh, the early covers in the series and uh, from number one, and it's, um, it's cool. Um, back of the book gives you a little bit of a, uh, a view of one of the covers from the uh, death of the family storyline. And if you take the dust cover off before we start opening up the book, you see that they went to a Tech 27 homage 
uh, for the hardcover, which I thought was kind of interesting. Um, this was a variant cover, and I don't recall the issue number off the top of my head, but it was a variant cover, and um, I think makes an interesting hardcover. It's very bright in, uh, in stark contrast to the dust cover, and, uh, and a cool look. So um, with that, why don't we dive in, uh, take a look at the artwork. As I mentioned uh, for myself, and I know for many of you out there that, um, that Capullo's art and Snyder's storytelling are right at the top of the list in terms of favorite comic books. Um, Capullo's art, and I'll show you a couple here. Um, these are, for my money, some of the more creative, grittier, realistic, uh, interesting takes on these characters that have been done since Jim Lee. And uh, so I've had the opportunity. The other, the other part that makes this a great uh, book for me is I've had the opportunity, and I'll show you a couple of pics here. I've had the, the just amazing opportunity to meet Scott and uh, Scott Snyder and Greg Capullo on several occasions. Anytime that I'm at a convention when they're there, I always make a point of saying hello. It's just great to engage with these guys. Both of them are actually happy to chat if you bring a, a question or something that you just want to uh, talk to them about relative to the work. Both of them are happy to talk about it, which is really cool. Um, I had the opportunity to meet uh, Scott for the first time in 2014 at C2E2 in Chicago, which was fantastic. And as I said, on several other uh, subsequent occasions, met Greg Capullo. And uh, both of these guys are just, they, they love the work. They love the stories as much as we do, which just makes it, which just makes it all that much more uh, compelling and fun and interesting. So, uh, so let's dive into the book a little bit. I'll give you an overhead shot, show you a little bit about the artwork and what's contained in the book. And, uh, and we'll go from there. All right, cool. Okay, everyone, and we're back. So let's take a look at the book, um, give you a little bit of a sky view here on this. Um, as we said, the Tech 27 homage cover is pretty cool, bright, and nice contrast with the dust jacket. I'm not sure how much you'd see it. And then this is, as we get into the book, you see here some of the artwork, the zero year artwork here, which I personally love. I think it's awesome. And a different take, a little bit from Death of the Family and as you take a look at the table of contents here, as I mentioned, the, the Court of Owls, uh, the Death of the Family, and the Zero Year, as well as all the additional pieces they, they plugged into the book. And they plugged in, I think, all of the variant covers for each of the, uh, the 33 issues. And if I haven't mentioned that so far, this does cover issues 1 through 33. So it's, um, it's a lot of content. And with the variant covers and some of the extras they give you at the end, you can see here that this, this bad boy clocks in at over 1,100 pages. So uh, you are getting a lot of bang for the buck here in terms of content. One of the other cool things they do in each of the 33 issues is they give you the, the, uh, the variant or virgin cover here artwork. This is cover one. And then they give you a bit of the, the sketch cover, the line work uh, that was done for that. So that's pretty cool as well. And then they go into each of the uh, each of the stories. I'm really happy with the paperweight in this book. You know, for an 1,100 plus page book, you'd think maybe the pages could be a little thin um, and a little cheap, and they're not at all. The paperweight is nice; um, does not feel cheap. It's also got a nice finish, not too glossy, but also not too matte, so it does justice to the artwork. And from what I recollect from reading all of the original single issues. Um, the, the look and feel of the artwork, the color, nothing's been messed with here and looks very true to the original. So, uh, as you thumb through, as you can see again, the Court of Owls cover, cool cover. There's the Virgin and there's the, the black and white. Um, and they do that consistently through the book. Um, another Court of Owls story here. One of the... One of the, the negatives that I would say, one of the few, if any, that I can uh, come up with on this book, there's a cool Dr. Freeze uh, cover there, is um, the way they did the binding on the book. And I saw this in, uh, in Gem's review <coughs> on the, the Gem Mint uh, channel is, and let me see if I can turn this up so you can see it. Typically, you can see the binding where the pages are tight to the cover. Typically, there'd be a separation the way that they they do the bindings and um, they call it the, the eye. Uh, it creates an eye where you have an arc of the pages and so they're not directly against the binding. And what that does is it eliminates uh, gutter loss. So 
Uh, for those of you that, that follow John Mint's channel, <coughs> um, when he's covered his omnibus and absolutes, he always, he always talks about stretching the spine and, and those things, and uh, all very true. And the way that these spines flex and the way that the book flexes over time as you open and close it is real important. So you do need to stretch out the spine. But one of the other aspects here is called gutter loss, and that's this space in between here that um, when you don't have that eye created and the, and the book isn't allowed to flex upward, um, it makes it a little bit more difficult to read as you move toward one end of the book or the other. Not so bad in the middle, but as you move to the ends of the book, it just makes it a little tricky. Now that said, again, for me, the quality of the book, how they've represented the artwork here, all makes it um, very worth it. I'm going to skip quickly past these so there are no, uh, no spoilers. But you can see here the, uh, the variant cover gallery that I mentioned earlier. And you see uh, Jim Lee's work on, on cover two, as well as Ethan Van Skyver's work. Just some amazing stuff. Uh, even Reyes. Um, there is just, it's just countless. Um, yeah, there's Jock's work there. And I've got, uh, I was actually able to, at New York Comic Con this year, pick up a limited edition um, uh, of 100, a print of this on watercolor, um, on watercolor archaic paper, which is just beautiful. And, uh, and I'll show you, it's a kind of a, a version of this that was used for the cover, um, but cool artwork. And I'll show you that. There's a steampunk. They even included some of the uh, those cute lighter hearted covers I was talking about earlier. Um, the steampunk cover, which I thought that when they did the steampunk variants, I thought that was really cool. DC did a good job with those. <clears throat> There's that absolutely epic zero year cover, which I, I love. There's the statue. I'm actually gonna, I expect to uh, to have a print of this in my uh, in my collection when I get that statue from Prime One. They did the, the bombshells covers, Alex Sinclair work. And then they give you some really cool insights into the the, uh, the head and portrait studies that Greg did of the characters as they were developing them. Some of those here. Some of the character, full body character studies. This is a really cool sketch of the uh, the Batman 14 cover. Joker. And the final page. So, anyways, that's a uh, sky view. There's the back cover there. Um, that's sky view of the book and uh, with that let's let's wrap it up okay guys that's going to wrap it up for today's brief uh installment of flip it or skip it this has been a look at scott snyder and greg capullo's volume one of the batman new 52 omnibus um, super excited about this one i can't wait to dive into it i've had um, occasion to look into some of the single issues you know over the years since this first rolled out in 2011 this storyline um, and they've been a super fun read I read all of the original singles. It's, the storylines are incredible. I can't encourage you enough to go out and pick this one up. If you don't uh, have the single issues or aren't hunting those down, this is a great way to read it. I'm certainly gonna dive back in. I'd love to hear your comments about what you think about these stories, what you think about the book, if you've had the chance to pick it up. Um, definitely leave those comments below. Also, please subscribe. If you enjoyed the video and uh, would like to see more content like this, please hit a like on the way out. I really appreciate it. I appreciate you spending a few minutes with me on the book. And uh, with that, we'll wrap it up. We'll see you next time. Thanks, guys.